it's recording right it is okay yeah we can start with the first problem uh, like uh, this problem is from easy section mean cost climbing tree stairs uh, on a staircase the ith step has some non negative cost cost of i assign zero index once you pay the cost you can either climb one or two steps you need to find minimum cost to reach the top of the floor and you can either start from step with index 0 or with the step index 1 <clears throat> let's see the cost here is 10 15 and 20 so if uh, they use i mean the cheapest is start from cost 1 if you take 10 then you have to again uh, go one step and uh, 10 to 15 so the cheapest one would be if you directly come on 15 you can uh, if you start from 15 you can go to 20 with uh, only 15 but from 10 you have to go to 15 and then 20 so cheapest would be the one if you start from index 1 and here the cheapest would be on cost 0 uh, like uh, from here if you start and just only on a step of once you continue continue and uh, 0 1 2 3 this one you uh, skip it so 1 2 3 4 5 and then 6 and 6 uh, total cost of 6 you can reach to the end and uh, cost will have a <clears throat> length in the range 2 to 1000 and every cost will be an integer in the range of 0 to 99 so you have to uh, deduce the cheapest cost in order to reach the flow so any queries in the question Okay. Any approach? <clears throat> Anyone? I think you can progressively cost of the minimum cost to reach I F P checking I minus plus the value of I minus. I think your voice is breaking. So I'm saying the you can think it recursively. Yeah. The minimum cost, let's say min of i equals cost of i minus one plus yeah. min of i yeah. minus, and the other term would be min of i minus two plus cost yeah. of i minus minimum of these two values as a minimum yeah. cost of each higher. <coughs> No, you want to share code or anything? No, I haven't written. Okay, okay. Yeah, the, the same approach I followed. Any other uh, apart from this, like? Uh, so what is saying like what? Uh, for uh, let's say for this uh, ayat uh, reason. You decide which one. Uh, you add this one plus the minimum of whatever you have. Uh, how much minimum cost you took in order to reach to fifteen. You just add to them and update it. That will give you the. Uh, that will give you the minimum cost to reach. So I initialize these two variables with the cost, this ten and fifteen, and then from from two, I'll be starting till the length of the cost. And just I'll uh, uh, when I am I at step I'll check what was the how much minimum. it was to read to this plus add this current node and update it at last just return the min cost and i think it will order off and this simple for loop i'm executing here the <clears throat> queries in the implementation part like Or any other approach or implementation somebody uh, wants to say? A question. So, example yeah. two, we start from index zero, yeah, and we skip for example two. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So we start with index zero, and yeah. then we skip huh? to one, right? One? So it's two. Huh? Hmm? So and then can we should we skip again or we can uh, go to the next one? You can skip it and go to this. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, uh -huh. and then skip again. Four, four. and then one. 
five. And then, and then six. Oh, that, that's how. So either you skip or you go to the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Right. Yeah. Next. It's a simple approach. Nothing. I don't know. If, yeah, I yeah. think it's a bit. Changed. If anybody has any other approach or wants to share the code, let me know. <clears throat> yeah, instead of that uh, bottom approach, uh, bottom up approach, what you use here, I use the top down with memorization. Oh. You want to share? Like, you want to? We can explain a little bit. I can stop. Sharing. Yeah. Yep. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm stopping my sharing. You guys see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's <clears throat> my approach. I use that. Right? And what? Mm -hmm. So recursively, so I use that the vector for the memorization, and okay. initially, yeah. So initially, I'm my these are my base condition. And it's equal to mm -hmm. one and n is equal to two. Yeah. And here I'm returning that. Uh, if I already actually evaluate that value, so returning that value. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm going and handling the 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 edge case here. So yeah, yeah. So that is the the case I handled here. And otherwise, recursively, this is for n minus two. I'm doing here, and this is for n minus one. So second last step yeah i think yeah. To... yeah so anybody has queries in this one or we can proceed then actually i have a question so in the question mm -hmm. it says that you can either take one step or two step once you pay the cost so in the first example, if you pay 10, then you can take two steps, right? And then you're to the end. Yeah. Why yes. is the 15, the, we need the minimum cost, right? So. Okay. Yeah. So when you, when you start from this uh, at, at 15, I mean the second step. So, so now from here, you can either take one step or two steps. So if you take one step, so you will end up here at the last step, you will have to pay the cost 20. But you had uh, you have an option to jump from two step from here, so you can directly jump from there. So in that case, you will uh, reach uh, the end out of the, oh, the stair, okay. and you don't need to pay anything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We can switch to next. I think. Okay. Yeah, let me yeah. stop my sharing. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this one is a medium section. So what uh, Alex and Lee are two, I mean, they are the two player. They continue their games with piles of stones. There are number of piles which are arranged in a row and each pile has a positive integer number of stones piles of it. The objective of this game is to end with most stones. Alex and Lee takes turns with Alex starting first. Initially, M is equal to one. Now on each uh, player's turn, the player can take, all, uh, can take all the stones in the first X, remaining piles, uh, Sorry, it's too much, I think. Uh, yeah, and uh, remaining piles where uh, where x is bounded by greater than one and less than two m. Then we set m to max of this. The game continues until all the stones have been taken. So assuming Alex and Lee play optimally, we need to return the maximum number of stones in this. I think we'll get here. So what uh, is being done here? Let's say if Alex picks the first stone. So when uh, the value of m is one, if you put m here, 
the next the opponent team can pick at most at most two stones either you can pick one a maximum number of stones you can pick is two so let uh, see if alex takes first pile at the beginning then lee have uh, lee can take the two piles and when lee will take these two piles seven and nine then an alternate alex will come and alex will have we can pick up to maximum of four stones because two into two four so the first case is like if alex uh, is picking one pile at the beginning lee can take two piles uh, lee can take two piles then alex can again take another two piles so first he pick the two then uh, it uh, first alex picks two the uh, pick two then the chance was taken by lee after that the chance of alex comes so he took all these four so by this way he could pick 10 stones but had alex picked two stones right at the beginning that is 7 plus 2 9 then uh, lee will pick four stones uh, but uh, in this case you can see the length of the array is less than that so all the three it will pick in that case so compared to the earlier one he is picking less stones so here uh, output your output would be 10 in this case and length is up to 100 and piles is 10 to the power 4 so any queries in the example or question because this question is bit uh, like No. Yes, still, uh, I'm sorry, still not clear to me. Okay, okay, sure, we go. See, let's say Alex picks first stones first time. Okay, now this uh, a value of a, initially they have told the value of m is one. So if value of if you put m here, uh, value one, so there are uh, he can at max pick two stones. Either he can pick either two or he can pick two and seven at a time. so alex was decided to pick the 2 so when he pick 2 now the cha uh, chances will be alternate now lee will come into picture so if you put one here lee can pick again two stones at max two stones so lee picked 7 and 9 now since lee picked two stones we put two here four now alex uh, we can pick four uh, stones but uh, since the length is less than the i mean array will get exhausted so whatever remaining stones are there he'll pick so by that way Alex picks first two, then these two four. So this came out to be ten. And now I had uh, Alex picks first two stones, so this would be nine. Then Lee will pick four stones because two into two is four. And by the time Lee picks the four stones, the entire array will be over. So uh, in this case, uh, Alex could pick only nine stones. So the first one was better approach because he could pick ten stones there. So so. Okay, I'm getting confused here with that the piles and the stone in the so okay. in initial initially says that uh, the piles of stone, right? Huh. So these are the index. I'm assuming that these are the piles, and the number shows that the stone in that pile is not that yeah. correct. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, stones are those uh, denote the stones. Okay, and uh, uh, when when uh, the first player start here in this case, Alex will start. So so uh he can pick uh, the stone from uh the piles from 1 to uh start with m so any file from uh, 1 to 2 uh, right is that correct yeah i mean he can pick either 2 or he can pick 2 and 7 both oh okay he can pick both no yeah because this. initially m is 1 and mm -hmm. uh, how they will pick is defined by this equation so when you put substitute m1 so at max you can pick two stones i mean greater than one and less than two so if it decides to pick first stone then they'll pick first one and then the next opponent team will come if it decides to pick uh, the first two after that the opponent team will come so he has two choices like he can pick one first stone first or two, both the stones at the same time in first choice and whatever alex picks depending on that uh, lee will pick so let's say alex picks first stone one stone one then lee will have a chance to pick two stones because at max two stones he can pick two in, because to m if you substitute m here one uh, you can pick at max two stones uh okay. can i can i show something maybe it's going to be clear and if sure 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 sure, sure. Oh, okay let me stop sharing okay um uh, Okay. Uh do you see? Yeah, yeah. What's screen? Okay. Uh and correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, uh okay, so blue is Alex, red is the other guy. So if Alex picks one, then the other guy can pick two. 
Let's start with red and blue only. You can say. Say it again. You can uh, name not do the nomenclature like red, red and blue. Start with otherwise LX red. It gets confused. And red is who? What was his name? The same as you can just use the name red and blue. That's okay. All. Okay, red and blue. Okay. So uh, blue. If if blue picks one, I mean just one of the pile, then uh, red picks two. After that, and then blue can pick four. And then red can pick eight, but because there's no more eight, there's only four out of them. Yeah. If uh, if blue picks two in the beginning, then red can pick four, mm -hmm. and then blue can pick eight, but because there's no eight, uh, can pick five. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's correct. I mean, at last, whatever the length is, they'll pick it. If it if it couldn't get that many number of stones. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he can pick like at most. So let's say suppose at most, yes. uh, at, mo uh, at most he can pick four, but he can also pick one, two, or three. Yeah, right? yeah huh? no, that is uh, it's defined by greater than one and less than equal to two. Huh? So in the case that we have. So picks two mm -hmm. and then picks four and four because here it stops. Okay. Four and four. What other option he has? Maybe pick one and then can pick only another one. So it could be either 10 or it can be six, right? Or no? Yeah. Or two. Is that correct? So nine. first you pick two and then four, four. Okay. No, it, it will be nine. I think two comma seven. No. I'm sorry. Say, say it again. I'm two saying comma. that first he, first he pick two, then he'll pick four four. After that, in the second choice, you have either he'll have to take both the stones two and seven. Alex will have to take both the stones two and seven. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I'm I'm talking about for the first case. This one will be two seven, and that's it, which is nine. I'm talking about this this one up okay. to here. Uh, it so blue must take uh, all the four, or he can take up to four here. Up equal to if they have given less than equal to four, he can take up to four. Okay, so what is uh, how do we determine how many he's gonna pick? Uh, that depends on how many the opponent team has picked. Oh, okay, okay. So if the opponent yeah. has picked two, he mm -hmm. has to put, pick between two and four? One and four. One and four. Uh, that x using x greater than equal to one and less than equal to two. Mm -hmm. So why did he pick, why did he pick two out of the, why did he pick only one in the example? The, the, yeah, because in question they have told he has to collect maximum number of stones. So he'll try to reach for the maximum one. Like he'll, mm -hmm. if he picks the four, he'll have more choices of getting the stones. I think here the objective of the question is uh, the objective of the game is to end here. Yeah. Objective of the game is to end with the most stones. Most stones. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, 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 got it. Yeah. Well, still in this case, Alex lost because two of four is ten, and he has sixteen. In, which, in the example you are saying? Yeah, in the example itself. Mm -hmm. so, so here in this example, so Alex, when Alex starts, so he has an option to uh, to pick one and two both or, or, or just only one, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, so if he picks one, mm -hmm. here in this, uh, so he picks one, and now the lead, uh, the lead turn, because now uh, the M is still one, based on the condition max M and one, because uh, Alex uh, picked the pile one, so X is one. So mm -hmm. one max of one and one is still one. So mm -hmm. Alex has only choice to pick either one and two, and one is already gone. So he mm -hmm. has an option to pick only from the second, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so now Alex picks seven. So now, uh, oh, sorry, Lee picks seven. So now uh, M will be? Lee will have to pick I mean, Lee can pick up to two because since Alex picks, you 
for you started lx picking one right mm hmm and then if this is you substitute the value that that value of m is one you substitute value of m over there so the other op opponent can pick up to two that is his choice whether he wants to pick one or two but at max he can pick two okay so so that tell us that the 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 number of piles you that player can pick not the 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 piles um, from uh, uh, say like uh, in that range I, i'm 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 getting confused that uh, okay um, let's let's start from, from the beginning again see uh, initially they have given m as one right mhm mm so x is a player so player have the choices to pick Uh, Could you please share your screen? Yes, yeah, sure. I can share it. I'll share it. I think he has to stop his sharing. Uh, Martino has to stop. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Let's say here. Yeah, see, let's M is one. Yes, yeah, M is one. Mm -hmm. So the player can so pick. The player can pick. I think voice is it. Yeah. The player can pick one, two, two stones. Minimum one, and at max two stones he can pick. So let's say the first choice of Alex was to pick the first only one. So if he can pick one, now his chance chances will be alternate. Now Lee will come into picture. Then yeah. Lee can again pick at max two. Okay. Now, now since he, he Lee has picked two, so you put two here four. Then Alex can pick next four. But since the array got over here, so whatever remaining uh, elements are there, that that will be picked uh, by the Alex. Yeah. yeah. One thing. one thing i want to mention okay. is that all the numbers in the ra are positive so mm. i think always uh, whoever player comes mm. will pick up the maximum stones that they can pick up right uh, if lee can pick up two then he will pick up two if he can pick up four then he will pick up four because every number is supposed to be positive if it was negative then the, it would have been a different option yes. right yeah yeah, yeah. and the yeah. objective is also to end the game with the most stones whichever player but mm. if we do that that will be a greedy one and Hi. you know if it greedy and it may not yield the best solution i think that it it would be uh, helpful if we uh, you know write the example and write out you know if he pick one what happened if he pick two what happened and you know okay. one one we go through of that example we see Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah now uh, I think uh, now the problem is clear to me. Yeah, yeah we can yeah, once thanks. more. We can say, Alex picks first time two, then Lee have the choices to pick from one to four, and so Lee will pick. Let's say seven and seven and nine was picked by Lee. Now again, Alex will come into picture. Now, since uh, he has picked, Lee has picked two, so Alex will pick two into two, four stones he can pick, but only two are there in, left in the array, so he'll pick four comma four. So in total, the Lee has picked stones is two plus four plus four, which is four four eight two ten. This is the first case when Lee has started with one stone. Now let's say if uh, that was Alex. that was oh, that was alex so, so alex is the winner in this i mean we can't say winner as of now uh, this this is the stone collected by alex now let's say alex has picked for first two stones in the next case that is let's say he, he still pick one stone but lee pick only uh, the next turn lee pick only one stone uh, I, oh you, I, let me see yeah, yeah. so Alex pick the first stone, and then yeah. next time Lee pick only one stone. Uh, no, Lee pick the two stones. No, but he have option to pick only one stone too, right? So if yes. he pick only one stone, then what would be the result? So yeah, he, that is yeah. Say so. He have he have option to uh, pick uh, one uh, stone or yeah. two stone. He, what if he see? pick one stone? Yeah, yeah, I want. If he picks yeah. one stone, he cannot okay. pick one stone. He cannot pick one stone because uh, la last line check assuming Alex and Lee play optimally. So Lee also wants to optimize his stones. So he cannot pick just one. And he, But what and if he he pick one stone and he get no, a better chance? Right? No, not allowed. Right? No, 
No, if he picks one, then I believe that in that case, Alex will pick all nine four four. Uh, let's say, let's say, okay, uh, let's say if first Alex picks one stone, so one stone is picked two, then Lee will pick. Lee can pick one stone seven. But again, since Lee Lee has picked one stone, so Alex will pick again at max two stones. So Lee will have nine and four. Because Lee has picked one picked one stone, so one if we substitute here where uh, this one this then Lee uh, sorry this is Alex then Alex has choices to pick two stones. Um, and, I think Alex picks four. Pardon? Uh, so uh, when um, Alex took uh, one stone, I know Lee also took one stone. Uh, in in when Lee in one stone. Value of m is two, and x is oh. one. So oh, yeah. the next m can be max of m comma x, which is two. Uh, yeah. So next Alex can take two m, which is four. Four, yeah. Oh, so Alex will take four. Ah, yeah. So Alex can take max four in the second chance of Alex. Ha, ma, ha, yeah, yeah. This one, max is sorry, m of ah, yeah. He can wipe the entire like nine four four. This is what you're saying, right? In the second choice. Yeah, he has a chance to pick uh, max four. He can four, yeah. pick five with one or two or three. Yeah, yeah. It looks like the language for this problem is really confusing. Yeah, it's not that clear. Like, uh, and yeah, somebody, I see, somebody was saying that they have to pick play optimally. So I don't think so. Why will uh, Lee pick one stone? He'll always try to pick the maximum since Alex is picking that maximum. Yeah, but let's say if he pick one stone, and mm -hmm. then you know, because we don't know what the future stone uh, would look like, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if he pick one stone, maybe the future stone will be, you know, uh, give him a better chance. Yeah, we'll have to pick the best possible choice there. Uh, I have a question uh, for sure. twenty four line. Uh, that means uh, Alex takes the one stone and the Lee can take one to four piles of stone. Uh -huh. But how, how about if the Lee takes the uh, seven, nine, four, four, take the rest of the piles of the stone? Because uh, in line 24, the Lee can take one pile, two piles, three piles. I uh, think Lee can take one to two, not one to four. Yeah. Uh, this is by mystery, uh, I think that. Could someone actually uh, ex uh, explain that what is the significance of x here? What does that mean? So is that the number of piles the uh, the player uh, picked or uh, the index of the pile? Yeah, index only, I think. Just the index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So is that, okay. If this was by mistake, I wrote for it will be two. X, X is the number of pile that one picks. It's not an index. It's the number of piles? Okay. Yeah, that player picks. It's a bit confusing, like it's not getting straight. Uh, I have a question. So, uh, if both players play optimally and they try to pick as much stones as they can, uh, then there is no scenario where uh, X can be less than 2M. Every time they try to pick as, as much as they possible, so X will be 2M every time, right? Uh, yeah. So, like, uh, why the is there any scenario where someone picks less than 2M files? I think we need to come up with such example. Mm. So let's come up with an example. Let's see. Uh, it's one, 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 uh, and then uh, and then ten, for example. Yeah. Uh, let's see, try that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So if, if yeah. Huh? Yes. 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 Go ahead. Let's say if, if Alex pick one, right? Okay. Uh -huh. And then Lee pick uh, two. One to one to two, we can pick. Yeah, but let's say he pick two. You know, let's say go with greedy. He pick two. So 
Okay. Yeah. So so Lee will get two, right? And then uh -huh. let let pick you know let let change the example one 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 and one more add one more and then ten. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So mm. now Alex pick uh, four one to four. Yeah, yeah. one to four. Mm. So every I think then all the three will come one one. Yeah. And ten. But let's see if he pick. Yeah, I try come try come up with the other, other example that, like when when the next time Lee move, he have to mm -hmm. if he he pick he have to pick uh he greedy he pick four but then if he pick four he gonna lose. Lose yeah. Uh, um, I think we need to drive to the fact that it says um return the maximum number of stones Alex can get. So in the example, um. In the example one, Alex, can, if Alex picks one and then Lee picks two, then uh, Alex picks, uh, he can pick up to four, but because there are two remaining, he picks the two. So now Alex has three, um, three number of stones, uh, three, three stones. So it means that that's the maximum. In, if uh, Alex picks initially two, then yeah. Lee can pick up to four, so he can he's gonna pick all three. So it means that Alex is left with only two stones. So two is gonna be less than the previous scenario when Alex picks only one in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Can you write it like it will be better if you? Yeah. yeah. Let me see. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, let me put it side to side. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we know that initially Alex can pick, Alex can pick two, I mean up to uh, from either zero, either one or two. So if Alex picks two, Alex will have three stones. But if in the beginning, if Alex picks uh, two, yeah. then he's gonna have two stones. Which yeah. is not what is uh, what is uh, you know what this problem is looking for is looking for maximum number of stones Alex can get, not the amount he's gonna get, but the number no, but, of stones. Okay. Mm. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Irrespective of amount it is. Mm -hmm. So that's I think that's the key here, of uh, you know understanding which way to go. They haven't made it explicitly. They haven't defined anything like that. Let, let's uh, let's consider this, okay? Let's consider okay. we had the full array, right? All this. Um, then, so th in that case, Alex would have. Alex would have one, two, three, four, five. I also have five stones. But if you pick two in the beginning that then he would have one, two, three, four, five, seven stones. So, th so this will be the, this will be, the answer would be two plus. Uh, these two are plus not the stones actually, you know, these are files. So every files. file I'm index sorry. has a stone. I'm sorry, so yes. So what, yeah, what they're looking is essentially uh, how many stones can you, uh, how many stones can actually Alex pick? Not the points. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so you mean, so mean, so you mean like two plus four plus four, Four is actually going to make ten, and this is nine here. Okay, got it. Right. All right. So got just it. to get you know, just to uh, you know, help you all guys. Uh, can can you look at this uh, problem uh, in you know simple terms as if you have a way to say what is the first choice, whether it's Alex or Lee. Let's assume I have a choice to either select one or two. Right. In the start, I can only select uh, one of the elements. Right. Now yeah. after that, you know, if you see the problem in itself reduces to any, you know, the number of elements in the array, excluding the first one, right? The problem itself reduces to only uh, elements from seven to six, right? So any choice you make is going to reduce your problem space to suppose in, in this case, what I'm saying is if Alex chooses one, which is first element two, your problem space reduces from 
two to six to seven to six only, right? From the second element to last element. The only thing that has changed is the person who's playing it. So ignore the fact whether it's Alex or uh, Lee for mm -hmm. now. Can you just imagine if someone is starting with this array, what will be the maximum he'll get? Just, you know, just uh, imagine that, right? Because if I'm getting 100 out of this array, suppose 30 is the maximum that I'm getting when I'm starting from the seventh element. So the, then the obvious point is the other one who's playing is all, you know, only going to get the total sum minus what I'm getting the maximum, right? Yeah. Now, if I'm starting with uh, suppose two and my sum till now is two. Now, after that, anyone who's starting from seven to six gets suppose 30 and the remaining is 70. And, and we have said that both of the players are trying to play optimally. That means they are trying to get maximum for themselves. And if we are saying from the second point till the last point, I'm only able to get 30, which means the person who has played before me whatever his sum is, I'm just not going to, you know, count that for now. He's going to get the remaining part. Uh, let me share my screen probably. That will help. Yeah, yeah, sure. That will be better. Okay. So yeah. let's assume I have uh, some elements. I, I'll not uh, add the numbers for now. I'll just say A, B, C, D, E, and F. Right? <clears throat> Sorry, and there's one player, player P. Just ignore uh, for the fact that whether it's Lee or someone else. I, I can start with A, right? I started with A. Now there's another player because for now I had only option to step, take one step. Now after that, there are two steps that are available, right? Any number of steps that I take also affects the number of steps that are going to be taken by the person after me. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So now I have two options. Now I have two options, which is B or B and C. Let's assume I take B or the other option is I can take B and C, right? So in this case, I'm taking one step. In this case, I'm taking two steps. Is that right? Now coming mm -hmm. here again, what will be my number of steps that I allowed here to, and in this case, here will be four. Four. Right? Now, if I go with the B one, I have option of taking two steps. So again, I can take either C or I can take C, D. Does this make sense? Yeah. Not right? I can take C, I can take C, D. Now after B, C, again, I have option four ways, right? I can take only C, I can take C, D, I can take C, D, E, and I can take uh, C, D, E, F, right? Yeah. Now, uh, in the BC, you have already taken the C. So C cannot be used. I guess. Yeah, all, so that's a repeating. Oh, sorry, uh, D, E, F, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. And also, uh, yeah. uh, in the left side of the B, uh, like left left child of the A is B, and which take one. After that, uh, also he can take four, child, four uh, max, right? It's not two, it's four. The problem says you can take uh, twice the number of steps that have been taken, right? That's the maximum. Ma max of max of M comma X. One is X, X is one and M is two. So max of M uh, comma X is two. Just and give me a second. Uh, I, I need to check the problem statement. My tab closed. Yeah, it is saying max of M comma X, right? And M is the number of steps that was taken previously. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. And X is, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, X is now the number of steps I can take from here, right? In this case, I took one step. Now the only step that I can take is one to two of M, which is one to two. Right? I can take either one step or I can take two steps. That's what I said. The number of steps you take in the previous turn affects the number of turns that you can take in the next one. But I don't no, get like when you go to the next level, is that still this, that would be the, the opponent turn, right? Sorry? Uh, when you it? go from how, to, because I, only one, you, you say only one single player here. 
Are you talking about the point B? Is this one that you're talking about? Yeah, at point A, right? First, take point A, and the next right. turn would be have to be the opponent. So the next level yeah. have to be the opponent, right? Yeah, that, that is opponent. What I'm saying is just ignore for the fact for now there's opponent, right? It's just a simple binary tree that you're recursion tree that you're creating. Oh, okay. And at every point, you're trying to maximize the profit that you can get, right? Hmm. Okay, and, and, and the from problem statement, it is saying that you can take X or uh, M steps, you know, in the next step. So in this case, if I take one step, in the next step, whoso is playing the next step, the limit is two. It can, he can only take two steps. In this case, I'm taking two steps, the next one can take four. Right, so here you can see now, that, you know, if I take, if Alex takes one step, uh, next time B or the B person has option of taking two things, right? But if now Lee takes two of the elements, now he's exposing all the elements, which are four remaining elements or three remaining elements to, uh, you know, Alex for consumption. So that's why it's, you know, my greedy approach is not going to work now because every time you take a decision, it's going to affect how many possible answers or how many possible approaches are available with the next person. Does it make sense? At least uh, from here, uh, you know, the number of why greedy will not affect or greedy will not work here. Yeah. Right? So now coming back to what we're discussing. So now let's assume this is the level where Alex is playing. Okay. And this is the level where Lee is playing. Okay. Now, suppose, I'm, I don't know the number, so suppose this is giving me 10, right? So that means C is the level where Alex is playing. Uh, Alex can get 10 as the, uh, you know, amount which uh, Alex can win and zero for me or the other player. So there is the other player, right? Now, in this case, Alex can suppose get 20 and Lee can get zero. Now, when I'm here, I know Lee is going to take the amount which is B. Right. Let's assume the value for B is 20, right? So here, Lee will definitely get 20 because Lee is not getting anything from any of its parts, you know, child parts. And what can Alex get from the, you know, both the sections is he can get, if he goes this way, he can get 20. If he goes this way, he can go 10. That is 20. He can get maximum from the Alex's part. Does it make sense? Same will try for these three approaches. So suppose here, D is five, and E is also five, and you'll get 10. Who's always playing the next round will give you 10. The other person will get zero. And let's assume F is 20. So you get 30, uh, sorry, 20 from here for, uh, actually it will be five plus five, 10, 30. 30 will be for Alex and zero for Lee. Now coming here, B and C. So we said B was 20. Let's say to C is 15, or let's say we have 10, 30, right? So this is for Lee, and whatever maximum can get from the child parts for Alex is 30, right? So if you take this part, this step, Alex is going to get 20, right? And you know, uh, uh, Alex, sorry, uh, Lee is going to take 20 uh, from this part, and he's going to get 30 from this part. So Lee will try to take the path which is going to give him maximum. Not this path, but this path. Does it make sense? Right? And when we are getting back, you know, this is the, you know, from Lee's step, what you will get back is Lee is going to get 30 from all his children. And what is the sum of remaining ones? If we sum it up and what is the remaining, will Alex will get. Let's assume it's 20. I'm not doing actually calculation. So this is a maximum Alex can get with whatever path he can take, given that both Alex and Lee are going to play a very uh, optimum game for themselves, right? Now you can say we have not considered Alex and Lee in the initial game. Let's assume the we reverse the game. Now Lee is playing first and Alex is playing the second one, right? 
the logic remains the same the only thing will change is when at here we we'll talk about lee getting the maximum points in the remaining will be analysis i hope it is not uh, more confusing if you have any questions probably i can help can you go with the example that they have mentioned once like i think <laughs> Uh, let me just clear it out. I'll take that example. Actually, this problem is very straightforward, so it will not make me not help it. Yes, take it. So we have first, uh, we have two here, right? That's yeah. what uh, Alex is going to take, and I have taken step as one. Now there are two options. I can take seven. I can take seven and nine, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. Lee has option of one to two. Now here I'm taking one step. Here I'm taking two steps. Yeah. So to interrupt you, but Alex also has an option to pick two or seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, at the start, M is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Clear it out. Say we have a dummy node, and then there are two options. One is two, another is two comma seven, right? Here mm -hmm. I am taking one step. Here I am taking two steps, right? Now coming here, this is Alex's layer, and then I have Lee's layer. Lee here can choose one step, which is seven, or he can do take two two steps, which is seven and nine. Does it make sense? I, I will first create the entire. Recursion tree for one side. Now coming to seven, again uh, I have option of uh, either one step or two steps here. I'll take nine, or I can take nine and four. I think it will be too huge. Let me try four, four, four. And that remaining I cannot. Store. Anyway, let's let's uh, kind of simulate this one. This will be four, right? And then, yeah, here I'm taking one step, one step, and then after four, and then one step. Yeah, this at least one recursion tree I can show. So this is Lee's step. This is Alex's step. This is again Lee's step. This is Alex's step, right? Here, there's no path. So if you come down, uh, you know, if Alex takes one step, uh, you know, here, uh, he's left with, he, he takes ownership of the two step, like now, now Alex has two, D has nothing, right? Now coming to here, uh, you know, uh, Lee takes ownership of uh, seven, and, uh, you know, Alex still has two. So this actually will work, let me actually work it out. From the dimension. So if we go down this path, Alex will take four from here and Lee will have zero. Right? Now, if you go up from here in this path, Alex and Lee both will have four. Now, coming up here, Alex will now have 13, Lee will have four. Right? We are actually summing up when, when we get the response uh, from the bottom layer. We know what Alex is getting, what uh, Lee is getting. And correspondingly, whose you know uh, turn it is, it is going to add it in its own bucket, right? Uh, I'm just going to show one recursion tree, and then we'll see what is the effect of other recursion tree on this. Now coming back here, we'll get 13 is Alex, and then 4 plus 9, 4 plus uh, you know 9 is again 13. Okay. Now in this case, sorry. Hello, uh, sorry, I, I did not get you. No, yeah, so think. that is a seventh node, not a nine, right? So four plus seven, right? Eleven, oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now this node, whichever is coming from this path, right? What is it giving? You know, if we have four and four, here Lee is going to get eight, and Alex is going to get zero. 
right? Now, if Lee takes this step, he will end up giving four points to uh, Alex and say the remaining four will be for him, right? But if he takes this path, Lee is going to get eight points and there will be zero point left for Alex, right? So out of these paths that are available, which one is better for Lee to take, right? It's this path because he will earn more points this in this way and the you know he will give minimum points to alex now instead of taking this path uh, you know uh, best possible path for whoever is playing here is going this way does it make sense till now yeah okay uh, actually no uh, it's reverse way so this way is for lee right lee will get four to eight points and alex will get zero points let me just get some extra things here. Right. So if we come from here, let, let's just because this is Alex's player now, Alex has four points from here, and this way Alex has zero points. Which one is better for Alex to go? Obviously, this part because he's going to get more points from here. Right? So he will consider this as its optimal path and ignore this part. Because right now Alex is going to play. And he'll just ignore but if if he does not go this way there's no way other states can be you know achieved by lee or any other future right yeah. now let's go with this one now we have 13 and 4 coming from here right alex is going to get 13 in this path and 4 for lee now there's another path right there's where we take 9 and 4 let's let me expand this 9 and 4 here right this is essentially this path. Now I have again option of taking one. Uh, so this one is I think two, right? Yeah. I can take, expand one of those, which is four essentially only, there's only one left after this, right? This is where Alex plays, this is where Lee plays. So if we get this, Alex will get zero out of it and Lee will get four at this step, right? Uh, at this layer. Now coming to Alex, Alex has no option because if he plays this one, Definitely Lee is going to get four of the remaining one, right? So now what will happen is Alex will take credit for all of this, like which is 13. And Lee will still remain with four. Right? Does it make sense? At least till now. Yeah. Okay. So if we take this part, 13 and 4, right? And from this path, we are again getting 3, 13, and 4. So both of the paths are actually going to give him same results. So this one will not make much difference. But uh, I think, uh, let me just uh, build up a tree here. Okay. Okay, so I think here it makes difference. So now when you are at this level, if you're coming from seven, you get 13 and 11 that we just saw, right? Uh, you get 13 and four from both the ends, and then uh, seven will be added to Lee's cost, right? Lee's, uh, and then you'll get 70, 13 and 11 as the maximum point that uh, Alex and Lee get, can get from this path. Now consider this path, right? We have two uh, steps here that we can take. So this is seven and nine. After that, the option is, uh, Alex is having you know next play. He can take one four, or he can take both the fours, right? If he takes one four, what is the remaining is another four for Lee. So this path will give him four equal points for Alex and uh, Alex and Lee. But this path will give Alex eight, and Lee will remain with zero. Now at this point, right? What will happen is Lee will try to maximize his profit. 
Now this will be nine plus seven sixteen plus whatever is coming from here four, right? So he'll take he'll be twenty for Lee from this path, and what is remaining for uh, you know uh, Alex is four, right? So he will have four slash twenty. So this is the maximum path or maximum profits Lee can get at this point, right? Every point Lee is trying to max. If Lee is playing, he's trying to maximize his. If Alex is playing, he's trying to maximize his. Now coming to this point, there are two paths that can come for him. Like right? here, Alex is getting. Let me just draw it here. There are two paths coming to this point. Right? There's thirteen for Alex, eleven for Lee, and the other path, if he goes from this direction, is four for Alex, twenty for Lee. Right? So Alex will try to go with this path because that is more profitable for him. If he goes with this path, he's for sure going to get only four as his points, right? And twenty so will be given to him. So you are checking all the possibilities from one to two, am right? For every for every player, right? Let's say one, yes, see. yes. So I have to actually decide which path to go, right? And, and yes. coming to oh. coming to the point where I have to see whether I need to. Take that part again or not? Uh, that's you know something you're trying to optimize, where you can actually use memoization to see you don't need to go to that path again because you have already pre-computed. So th that's what I was saying. You know, if you can just see this problem, if you have this problem, right, and you know the number of steps that you can take, right? Here you can see if I'm going left path, the maximum number of steps I can take is always going to be two, right? Because at every step I'm taking one step, and the available for next one is two. Right. So your memorization will be if you are at index i, right, and you have option to go to n steps, right. That will always remain same. This you can cache it up. Right. Let's assume this one. Let's say this one. Right. If you reach this one. Okay, and you have option to go to only two steps, whether you reach after selecting this one or you select after selecting these two both for the previous step. It's not going to change the answer that what is the maximum that you will get for these three elements starting from here with only two as your starting point, the two as your starting number of elements that you can take. Mm -hmm. Right, so that is what you can memorize. So you will not have to actually uh, traverse the entire states again and again. But yes, so what you are doing is essentially trying to see each possibility, right? Every possibility of taking and trying to see which option of mine will give me maximum profit. Right. So Alex here has options. He'll try out of these two. If you see his option of going with the left or taking only one here. Is more fruitful. If he takes two, he's going to lose more items to Lee as compared to giving him more items. Uh, Does it make I sense? Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of doing all this, what if we divide the array into the uh, chunks of size to power i? With i equal to one, two, and like that, person who gets the last chunk is the winner, or the person who gets the maximum number of files, right? I'm sorry, I did not get you. Not really, right? Yeah, like it, 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 for example, if the, in this example two comma seven nine four four, uh, if we divide the array into size of one, uh, mm -hmm. that is, and next chunk of size of two, that is seven comma nine, uh, and next chunk of size of four. But we have only two L, comma four. We have only two elements, right? Now, what if I select three elements? I have option to select from one to four elements, and I select three elements. But array will be over by that time, no? Not in this, yeah. but you'll have longer examples also, right? Okay. Huh. So, one, so, so, two, four, eight, ten, but, fifty. But they play optimally, so they try to pick uh, all the thing, all the piles they can take. Right? No. No, but but if you are not not in a single chance, but across, across the game. 
no in in in, in suppose in any position he can take uh, four piles uh, and he is playing optimally and try to get the more number of stones then he will try to pick all four piles right so he he is no, trying no. to play optimally the entire game not the single chance yeah optimally so he tries to uh, he tries to think uh, like try to win the game and tries uh, in to win the game he, he needs to get as much stones as possible so he tries to pick as much number of stones possible right no so I there's one more it's... catch actually uh, for that so what you are doing is as many as you take in this step is also going to open up more number of stones or piles for the next step yeah yeah right? so that's what i'm telling so alex is starting the game and he has a to give the last bigger chunk to alex or the league so if he can uh, calculate that based on the length of the array and he tries to make the his first choice to get the last bigger chunk then he will get the maximum number of stones that's exactly what we are doing right we are taking uh, but first taking one take going to recursion the... going to recursion we can take the length of the length of the array and try to find the chunk uh, I'm, so, uh, so that can be. Yeah. So, how do you know when you are at the tenth position? What is, what is the number of steps that the person can take? We saw in the recursion uh, there are there are ways. I can just give. Uh, there's only option for taking two steps at the end. There's three steps. There are four steps. There are five steps. Right? If you I will, just go, let me open. I will calculate step. it the starting itself. Like uh, for suppose the size of the uh, arrays uh, arrays uh, like. Say sixteen like that. Uh, so, mm -hmm. if we divide the array into into, into chunks of two power two power uh, sizes, uh, so mm -hmm. we chunk of one, uh, two, uh, four, eight. Uh, how much is that? Twelve and sixteen. So last chunk, last bigger chunk is eight, right? Right. So if 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 the Alex starts. Picking one stone, he uh, uh, Alex will get the uh, chunk of eight, eight piles. Right, right. If he if he tries to pick two piles, then Lee will get get the chance to pick the uh, chunk of eight piles. Yeah, so but that, that would be the greedy approach, right? That yeah, he will no. get chance to take eight piles, but he doesn't know whether those eight piles have. So let's assume the ending eight piles are only one thing, right? One, 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 one stone. But the the, the middle four that you just skipped, they are having hundred, 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 hundred. No, I'm talking about the piles. So okay. Yeah, the problem is not to Some get the piles. number of piles. Problem is to get the number of stones. Yeah, if you are saying if you want to take the maximum number of piles, then yes, it makes sense to you know see what you can step take and what is the future step that you can take if you can take all the numbers. That's you know. I think earlier also uh, someone was saying uh, you know take a greedy approach to take that uh, that makes sense. But here the problem is uh, you know there are specific number of stones in each pile, and you have to choose those piles which are going to give you maximum number of stones, or try to choose those maximum uh, or try to choose those piles that you can attain and they will give you the maximum number of stones. Okay. Yeah. Got it, man. If you are saying for the piles, yes, that makes sense. You can just say, you know, if you take one, what is the next number of piles that you can take with the length? That totally makes sense. But here the problem is that each pile has a specific number of uh, stones to, you know, give it to you. Does anyone have any, uh, you know, doubts over this approach or this? Uh, Structure that I just created. I hope you are able to uh, see the uh, overlapping sub problem here also. Like if I expand this one, you'll see this this one getting repeated. Four with steps two. And here four with steps two. Or do you want me to clear the recursion tree again and make it probably clear more? The way you show us, you go with the bottom up approach, right? 
uh, this one is actually uh, top to down, uh, top bottom. Approach. No, but you you show from the bottom going up. So which which you build? I, I was trying to yeah, I was trying to mimic the recursion. Okay. Because that's how bottom down will work, right? You will have a, a terminating condition, which is essentially when you don't have anything else to choose afterwards. Like this is the only one element, right? And then it will go up the recursion tree. And the decision, final decisions will be taken up when the recursion tree completes. That's what we are doing. We are taking a decision here once we have output of both the subjects. You, you can also do a bottom up approach, just assuming that uh, if you are at point four and you have option of taking one step, two step, three step, essentially how many steps you can take, right? This is a five uh, length array, the maximum you'll have three, right? So you can take all the steps and then say, okay, if you are one step, the maximum you can get is four. Maximum Alex can get is four. Or maximum whoever is playing can get four, right? If you take two, it's still four. If you take three, it's still four. Now coming to this four, you can build it based on if you have one step, if you have two step, if you have three step again. Now if you have only one step, you know that there will be one more point left Okay, and then consider that one. If you take two, you can take this as a entry for Alex and the remaining uh, remaining one will be for the, uh, this uh, Lee. So essentially every time, uh, every point you're trying to find what is the maximum you can get from this index till n if you have option to take one step, two step and three step, right? And at the end, when you are here, you can see what is the maximum you can get from this step, right? Suppose it's 70, but that is what Alex will choose to, Alex will choose to, right? Because if you can get by any, by any player, if you can get 70 as a maximum at the first step, either taking one, two or three steps, like suppose if you take one step, it is giving you 30 as a maximum. In uh, step, in, in step two, if you take two steps, it will give you 40 and step three, it is giving you 70. Definitely the first one will choose to take <coughs> sorry, three steps, right? And this is the maximum that you can get. Yeah. This is not a medium. <laughs> I think this is a sorry? hard one. Uh, this is actually a, a kind of DP problem actually. Uh, it's not exactly hard one or not exactly, it's in between medium and hard. Yeah, it's not exactly medium, not exactly hard. I think if you do via recursion and like a memorization, this is more of a medium, but if you go by a bottom of approach, it's more between medium and hard. That's what I think. Yeah, if you can create this recursion tree, probably that will help you to understand both top down and bottom. Up. So if you know here, that will help you to create the bottom of approach also. But yeah, as you said, bottom up is probably more tedious to create, but you know, top down recursion actually comes up uh, if you see this tree. Yeah, I think this is this is one of the problems out of the minimax problems, right? Uh, yeah, sort of minimax because at every step you are taking max value. Yes. Yeah, so you you basically try to try to maximize your chances. Yes, so, exactly. You are trying to go the path which can give you maximum. That's the yeah. simplest thing you can try. Yeah. To I think we have one more problem to discuss. Or if you have any questions on this one. If not, uh, okay, so Sushant, back to you. Is there, oh, it's a, that's fine. Oh, that's Is there a way to take a screenshot from this? Uh, Let me try again. From, the, from Zoom? If it's there, I, I'll take a screenshot. Yeah, I, I want to take a screenshot somehow. Right. It's a bit messy. I don't know if anybody will understand after it, but I, I'll save it and share it on Slack. Yes. You can make a doc or something like that and put it in the Slack, which that will be more. I'll, I'll, I'll paste the um, JPG image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will be. But pardon my uh, 
writing skills on the whiteboard here. Nice sir. explanation also. Let's proceed to the next. My implementation is not correct as per this. So, in effect, uh, past the test cases, so I'm sure it's there's also some other solution. Yeah. If it's if it does has it uh, you know passed all the test cases? No, no, mine hasn't passed all of the test cases. You want to share? You have. implementation part so did you say anything to me i'm telling do you have implementation part you want to share uh no i am not implemented but i can write it down and publish it uh, tonight slide okay okay Okay, let's begin to the third problem. So, it's like a binary tree is given, and we need to install cameras on the nodes of a tree. Each camera at a node can monitor its parent itself and its immediate children. So, we need to calculate the minimum number of cameras which are needed to monitor all the nodes of a tree. So, for this tree, if we see, if we put camera at the mid, this way here, it can monitor its up, left, right. So one is sufficient to monitor all the possible nodes of this tree. But let's say if we come to this, uh, this cam will be able to monitor the parent and the child, and this will again take care of the um, child. So minimum two cams are required to monitor all the possible nodes. Yeah. So two we have, and the number of nodes in the given tree will be in this range, and every node has a value of zero. So so any queries in the question like. Are we gonna go with uh, breadth first search? Yeah, we I mean breadth first. DFS, DFS. I think it's better with DFS. Like we can go in all the possible directions. Yeah. I haven't tried with DFS yet. Any other approach apart from DFS or DFS? How does it work? How BFS work? If DFS, I'm not sure. He's telling me. What about DFS? Yeah, DFS. We can go like uh, we'll uh, we can check its children and its parent. We'll start from the bottom, and. Uh, accordingly we'll check whether its parent has uh, cam or not if its parent has cam then definitely these two nodes would be covered and subsequently we will go to the root and whatever depending on the values what the intermediate nodes are returning uh, based on that we'll insert whether we need to insert cam at the root or not that will help us i think i'll show you the trick like i have this one like uh, i need to take the also we have so what i did here like um, i have some certain annotations of them like if there is zero that means that uh, they are not covered and in case if you have meant the one that shows that those nodes are covered but that doesn't have cam cam and uh, if number 2 is written that shows that we have already uh, put the cam over there i think we'll go through this then we'll get it so what i'm checking is first mm -hmm. yeah so as you can see this uh, this is for uh, if it's null if your node is null then return one and after that i'll uh, do dfs up to the we'll start from the root and go to the extreme left and we'll check uh, the 
uh, we'll check whether it has any whether its nodes are covered or not in case if nodes are not covered we'll try to put a cam at the parent of those children to cover those two nodes like let's see uh, here node dot left if we go to the mm, i think here we put it yeah Yeah, we can see here. So, went to the left. Uh, left of this node is null, and left of this node is null. So, none of the condition will match. Neither these nor this. So, they'll return zero to their parents. So, uh, so, so they'll sorry. Uh, so, they'll return one one, uh, one one to them. Now, because one one stands that uh, it doesn't have any children. Uh, it doesn't have any nodes. That, that means they are not covered. so this will uh, they'll from the left side they'll get this corresponding uh, and this uh, since you have one one per, for them corresponding to this left child will have zero and uh, to the right from the right child again we don't have any what do you say neither left child not right child so they'll return to this to the right as zero and depending on this left and right as zero will just return to denoting that uh, they don't need any cam This, this gives uh, so they need they need one cam so once they need any cam we'll put the cam over here and we'll return the value of two to the root to indicate that a cam has already been placed which will take care of its parent and its children so this is what it's done here it's a simple recursive equation that we are applying here we didn't have any node so they are returning left as one right as one this one if not no return one and same with this one after that uh, from these two nodes they'll return zero to them because uh, one one will none of the conditions is there for one one so it will return zero in both the cases since they are zero zero so we'll need to we'll put one cam so we are adding one to here and it since we have given the cam its parent doesn't need we need return two and two denotes that it has already been cam has been placed it doesn't need any more the in implementation and doubt like any queries now it look good to me oh. but let's say if the root is no then you return one uh, if the root is no Yeah, we we'll do the same one. thing. Then we still yeah. need to return one camera. No, re we'll return one. one okay. No. Oh, one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, one mean. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, you don't have any left hand. Yeah. yeah. Answer will give you the total number of how yeah. many cameras you need to install. Right. Okay. No. Um, I have one. question uh, not with yeah. the solution if i can see the diagram in the lit code okay okay sure 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 let me so this input it says 0 0 null then 0 0 so what uh, order is that so the, is this uh, like in order or pre order i cannot make sense of this so order three inputs on the code i usually level order it like a heap uh, structure So the root they have like one left child and then one right child and uh, there's no right child so they put no right there. Oh, BFS type means it is like yes. Okay. okay, thanks. Yeah. So I think it's clear. Or any doubt queries? Okay, let's wrap it up.